Okay, here we go. First, um, a new design. You're going to start a sketch. Create, um, create sketch on the very top. And you're going to choose a plane, typically the, the back plane. All right, now we're going to do sketch, rectangle, center, point rectangle. And now it's very easy to enter the dimensions. So you just type in 100, hit enter, 100, hit enter, and enter one more time, and that's it. You have your basic shape. Now up to sketch. Going to round the corners with fillet. So click on the two edges. And you can change the size of the fillet easily in the box. Continue around to all four corners. Hit enter. That's it. Okay, now you can uh, stop the sketch. Alright, we're going to go over to create form. Great. Now we're going to extrude. So we're going to select what we're going to extrude is the box, the square, and you can drag it or again you can enter the number in the um, the rectangle. Now this is really important what's coming up next. This is the amount of faces. Now as you can see it doesn't actually match the form. So the you have to adjust the number of faces until it's close to what you want. So I think uh, there's 10, 11, 12, and I kind of like the form. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now this is this is also extremely critical how many faces, front faces you have because this is where you manipulate uh, the object. So too few you're not going to be able to manipulate them. So I chose six. All right, so there's our basic shape to start with. Now we're going to do edit form. So we just click on a line and hit edit form. Now when you double click, it creates it it selects 360 degrees. So if you notice I'm double clicking and it's adjusting completely around the vessel. If you just click once, you're only going to select one of the faces, like right here. And then it's not going to be symmetrical around. So make sure you double click and the yellow line is all the way around. Okay, it's also important that you, you grab the, this is the uh, shrink or expand. That's the very, the three triangles with the hole in, this, in the center. So it takes a little bit of practice. Just watch the video and play, play with it. And now I'm just changing the uh, the shape. So I'm shrinking here, expanding there, till it's something that uh, resembles uh, what I'd like to print. Okay, now we're going to go to. I'm just showing you how to get into Edit Form a different way, so you can go Modify Edit Form. Alright, so now we're going to select a different tool and we're going to select the tool that actually twists. So you see the, the one I've selected here and you can also see I've put 40 degrees into it. So I'm twisting that whole selected yellow line. Again here, double click to get it to go all yellow. And you might have to manipulate it so you can see the correct um, the tool to, to uh, to grab right here, okay, and you can see I'm twisting it in the opposite direction. So I'm going to skip a line, come up, again double click so you select 360 degrees around, find the handle that you want, there it is back here, and twist. Okay, I'm not quite happy with the, the lip, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another another line here in a second.
So it kind of looks okay. And now double click on the top line. So you get the yellow all the way around. There, double click here. Alright, now I'm going to go up to modify. Insert edge. This is quite useful. Now the green line is the, the edge I'm going to insert. So you can move it up and down. So I just want to modify the top lip just a little bit. So I'm going to place it right about there. Hit OK. And now I'm going to come back, double click on the top edge. And the line I just inserted will keep the top edge from going in too much or coming out too much. So, move it around. Not quite happy with it, maybe somewhere in here. And remember about overhang, so you can't have too steep of an angle with ceramics because of the uh, ability to print on a slope or an angle. Okay, that's it. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to change the bottom just a bit. I'm going to shrink it here. And I'm going to go ahead and insert another edge on the bottom, similar to what I did on the top. Drag it down so I can just affect, affect the very bottom edge. Double click so you get the yellow line. Edit form. Grab the three triangles. And you can experiment with the other tools also in edit form. There's there's a lot you can do a lot you can do here. So that's about it. We're ready to print. Okay, let's print. Select 3D print. Click on the vessel. It's already been converted. And then you're going to go to custom and either choose one of the programs that uh, that you have. Um, I have to hit custom to get to uh, 3D, um, simplify 3D. Okay, now it's automatically open, opening simplify 3D. Okay, there's the vessel. Now we have the opportunity to change the scaling. So double click on the vessel. And here's all the parameters. <clears throat> and the easiest one to change is the uh, percent. Um, so it's 100% right now. And I'll change it to 150. You can uh, rotate it, um, uh, lower it down. So lots of options here. OK, now we're going to go through the process settings. So this is uh, pre-selected. So we've got the extruder page, 3.5 uh, millimeter nozzle. The layer height is uh, we're going to change it to 1.2. Uh, bottom layer is two layers, and single outline, which is uh, the vase mode. <coughs> Additions. I do a couple of extra skirts for priming. Uh, no infill. No support, temperature, none of those pertain. Okay, there's a starting script and then the ending script. And the next one is needs to uh, be checked, which is a speed, the default uh, printing speed, 55, the movement speed. Okay, everything else is good. So now we're just simply going to hit prepare to print. And then you can burn it to an SD card if you're happy with it and uh, put it into the uh, 3D potter. 
Once the SD card is mounted in the machine, it's a simple process of uh, pushing uh, two buttons and uh, starting the print. Um, our touch screen has the advantage of having full control over the flow and the speed. So as you're priming uh, your first uh, layers, you can get the speed down and the flow correct um, for the particular nozzle. Uh, so even though you slice it and simplify 3D at a particular setting, if it's not exactly correct, you can um, modify this setting to some extent uh, within a touch, uh, touch screen. So this prints uh, 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 relatively um, uh, consistent. I had a couple of small air bubbles. If you look at the nozzle as it comes around, you can see that it's actually the layer uh, being extruded is compressing the underlying layers. Uh, this is this is this is important in order to get good adhesion. So you don't want to just lay down the heavy layers one on top of each other. They actually have to be pushed into each other. Uh, and this is a good uh, good example of that. You can actually see it rippling underneath the nozzle at least one or two layers down. A little bit about clay consistency which is so important um, especially for the 3D potter because our extruder is capable of extruding a real clay so uh, basically very uh, close to the consistency of throwing clay so it's not slip, it's not heavily diluted um, but the consistency to get a, a nice print like this is very important so typically we add just a little bit of moisture to a 25 pound bag uh, approximately 10 ounces of um, uh, distilled water per 25 pounds and this gives you uh, uh, still a thick clay but it's supple enough that you get uh, good adhesion because adhesion is is determined also by the the moisture content of the clay so even though we can extrude much heavier clay you need to have enough moisture for the uh, interlayer adhesion to, to happen um, and as you can see from you know the flattening down of the layers and the and uh, for maximum adhesion and a, and a good test after you, you make a print like this is to take it and uh, pull the uh, pull the layers apart to actually destroy the print but uh, you can actually see how much adhesion that you're uh, you're able to achieve and I've got a little more video here so we'll talk about nozzle size so we have a full range of nozzle sizes down from one millimeter up to I think um, 16 millimeter so the nozzle size is determined basically by the size of the vessel so if you're producing a small vessel maybe two or three inches tall you can you can try a two millimeter nozzle or the the three point three point five but as you get larger and you know up to twenty four inches uh, your wall thickness needs to be more substantial so then you're going to move up to uh, the eight and the nine and the ten millimeter um, a nozzle width um, but of course you're going to be using a lot more clay with the uh, the larger nozzle so you have to anticipate the uh, the volume uh, versus the size of the uh, um, the vessel that's about it be sure to visit our website for a full line line of products and uh, thanks for watching